I'm Jim Adams. I am the retired Deputy Chief Technology Officer of NASA. I live in Maryland in the United States, but I'm often on the astronomy program on RSG called Stira and Planeta. Lots of times when I visit South Africa and other places in the world, people ask me, how did I get started? How did I end up working at NASA? And the story is a long one and a fascinating one, but I'll try and summarize it for you real quickly. I was in college and I was studying physics. When uh, I was in college in the 1970s, the microchip was really not very useful, but we were playing with them to try and make them more functional. And I wanted to, um, when I graduated, work for a cash register company, a company that made cash registers. We don't even use cash registers anymore. But um, they had the same vision and they, they thought, uh, you know, someday cash registers are tronic. And, um, but they were hiring electrical engineers and I was a physicist. So I had to go with my second choice. And I ended up at the General Electric Company building spacecraft. And one day, NASA called me and said, we really would like for you to come work for us. And so I spent time at the Goddard Space Flight Center in Maryland, building spacecraft and of all kinds of varieties. And then ultimately ended up at NASA headquarters as the deputy director of planetary science, which I really think is the sweet spot in my career. And after that, I was promoted to be the deputy chief technology officer, which was the highest ranking technologist of the civil servants uh, within the agency. Over the course of my career, I've been involved in over 30 successful spacecraft missions, space missions that would um, measure the Earth's atmosphere, looking for rainfall, or go to Mercury or Mars or Pluto. All, all of those missions I had some role in, Sometimes it was very significant, like I was the project manager, the deputy project manager. And other times I was the fellow that the project managers reported to and I made sure that they had the proper funding, that they uh, had proper standing in Congress, which is a very important political thing for most missions. And, um, and that uh, we were generally going to be accomplishing the goals that the American people had asked us to. So there's a handful of them. I mean, I loved all the missions that I worked on. One looks at the sun in 3D. It's a mission called Stereo, and it, um, it puts a spacecraft in, uh, in orbit around the sun in front of the Earth and uh, behind the Earth, leading the Earth and trailing the Earth. And you can get 3D vision of the coronal mass ejections and solar flares coming off of the sun and hurtling through space towards Earth. And it had never been done before, and so it was a, it was a really cool thing. Another was, obviously, the rovers on Mars were incredibly important, uh, not only in the United States, but around the world. And then there's a mission to Jupiter called Juno that was especially important scientifically because it, it it's going is making measurements now at Jupiter that um, help us understand whether or not the planets all formed in the same order and orbits that they're in now, or whether they moved around the solar system as the solar system evolved. I did, yeah. I was um, uh, brought on board to work on the International Space Station. Back then we called it Space Station Freedom and it got, uh, it went through several reinventions, but uh, I was in, uh, in part responsible for the attached payloads that go on the outside of the space station, um, the science payloads, and uh, the robotics. Uh, we had a, a robot that we were working on um, to help the astronauts assemble the space station. From the beginning, NASA has always split some of its work to the private sector and some of it it kept in-house. Um, the, there's always been more work than NASA could do as, an, as, an, as a, a government agency all by itself. And frankly, that's a good thing. 
the government, in my opinion, should do what the private sector can't or won't. Um, so if you want to want to fly to Pluto, for example, and we can't find somebody to do it for us, then the government should get involved and go do it. And um, so I personally think that the best way to get a mission built and launched is through the private sector. And so a lot of you know about Elon Musk. I have met him several times and um, I really admire his business model, which is very commercial. It's, it, it's I'm gonna build this and if the US government, specifically NASA, likes it, um, they'll buy it. Uh, and that's the case, you know. And of course, it, I'm simplifying that a great deal, but the bottom line is that um, uh, the SpaceX commercial model is a model that needs to be replicated throughout the agency and the government. Long time, long history with JAXA and, and Europe. And they're, um, they and um, uh, Italy and Canada tend to be the go-to partners when we have scientific instruments that we want to fly on board. Um, but, uh, you know, there are something like 26 nations that are involved in the International Space Station one way or another. And it's uh, uh, it, it, what we really do is we really look for the right fit between somebody that uh, that's interested in going into space with us or supporting a space program and their own skills and what they have to offer. An example is South Africa was uniquely located um, not only for the Apollo launches but for many rocket launches after that and we set up a receiving station there in Hartebistock and um, that antenna is still there today. It's a radio telescope now but it, uh, it was used uh, to track the spacecraft, the rockets, as they went overhead, as they went over Africa on their way out to the planets. I have seen CubeSats um, morph from um, almost a play toy, uh, something that uh, people were attempting to do just so that they could learn about spacecraft and it didn't really have much functionality to things that are now becoming scientifically useful. And now that's when I'm getting excited about CubeSats. We we're starting to design instruments that fit in the CubeSat format uh, and, uh, and can be operated by a CubeSat. That just means things get smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller. And um, we're actually looking at flying CubeSats to Mars now you know, and, and into deep space. That, that's, a, uh, that's an important thing because getting out of the Earth's gravity, launching away from Earth is so very costly and dangerous that you want to be able to build uh, as small and light a spacecraft as you can. And then you want to be able to replicate it if there's a failure or if you wanted to go do something slightly different. So I, I see the standard format of CubeSats as, um, as the future, um, at least for the next decade, while we um, continue to explore space. My wife says I'm not really retired, I just don't work for NASA anymore. But um, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm still pretty involved, especially in, on the science side, not so much on the human space flight side anymore, but I'm, I'm under contract to help NASA evaluate proposals for new space missions to new destinations. And it's a blast. I, I get to be retired and I get to keep my fingers in the cutting edge of the science as we move forward. I believe that humanity's destination is to the moon and then to Mars. And I think, I think humans want to go. And I think that it may take generations for us to get there, or it may not. If you listen to Elon Musk, it could be in you know, five years or so. But, um, but I think ultimately that's our destination is to become a multi-planet species. And that's gonna take a lot of people.
It's going to take a lot of determination, and it's not just astronauts planting flags on on the moon and Mars or the moons of Mars, and that sort of thing. It is engineers and scientists working together. It's it's uh, it's people that manufacture things working with people that know how to make soft goods like clothing. You know, maybe someday we'll we'll need services in space like dry cleaners and pizza delivery guys. You know, it's going to be an amazing future as we move forward.